Hi. Motor supply of pupil movements is by the autonomic nervous system, with the sympathetic nervous system supplying the dilation and the parasympathetic system controlling constriction. A defect in the sympathetic supply to the eye, also called an oculosympathetic palsy, is Horner's syndrome. It makes the affected pupil smaller or myotic, causing the pupils to be unequal in size. This pupillary size difference is termed an isochoria. Here, the right pupil is slightly smaller than the left. When the lights are switched off, this anisochoria becomes more obvious as the normal left pupil dilates. The affected right pupil may also dilate, but more slowly. This is called a dilation lag. The anisochoria may therefore be greatest a few seconds after switching off the room lights. Another feature of Horner's illustrated here is an upper and lower lid ptosis, making the upper and lower lid slightly closer together and making the eye appear smaller. The patient may also notice a loss of sweating on one side of the forehead or face, called anhydrosis. We therefore have a triad of ptosis, meiosis and anhydrosis. If the Horner's syndrome is congenital, or occasionally if long-standing, then iris heterochromia may also be noted, the affected iris being lighter in colour than the other eye. Horner's syndrome can be confirmed pharmacologically by use of apriclonidine 0.5%, commercially available as iopidine drops. First, measure the pupil sizes. This is readily achieved by taking a quick photo with a digital camera. Then, instill a single drop of apriclonidine in each eye. After one hour, re-examine the pupils. Horner syndrome is confirmed if the anisochoria is reversed. Since apriclonidine has no effect on the normal pupil, but dilates the affected pupil. The ptosis may also disappear. Care is needed with infants under 6 months as they have been reported to have become very lethargic after this test. An alternative test is a cocaine 4% test. Here, a single drop is instilled in each eye and the eye is re-examined after one hour. The cocaine dilates the normal pupil but has little or no effect on the Horner's pupil. The anisochoria is therefore increased, most noticeably in light conditions. Having now diagnosed a Horner syndrome, we need to try and locate the cause. This is divided into three groups along the oculosympathetic pathway central, preganglionic, and postganglionic. It does not cross sides along its entire course. The central pathway arises at the hypothalamus, then travels down the brainstem and cervical cord to synapse at the ciliospinal center of budge between C8 and T2. Central Horner syndromes are usually not an isolated clinical finding. Instead, they are part of a wider clinical picture featuring other brainstem or spinal symptoms and signs. Causes of central lesions include stroke, tumour, syrinx, vascular malformations, trauma or demyelination. An example is lateral medullary or Wallenberg syndrome caused by posterior inferior cerebellar artery ischemia. This features dysphagia, analgesia in the ipsilateral face and contralateral trunk and extremities, ipsilateral cerebellar ataxia, and rotary nystagmus. Skew deviation may occur with vertical diplopia. Suspected central lesions are usually investigated by imaging with MRI. From the ciliospinal center, the second order neuron leaves the spine and joins the sympathetic chain close to the lung apex and passes up to synapse at the superior cervical ganglion in the neck. This preganglionic pathway is damaged in a number of ways. The T1 nerve root may be damaged at birth with an associated brachial plexus palsy causing hand weakness termed a clumpcu palsy. Compression at the pulmonary apex may arise from a pancose lung tumour or breast cancer and also TB, cervical rib or vascular anomalies. There may be associated shoulder tip or arm pain where the brachial plexus is affected. This presentation would indicate the need for a chest x-ray and appropriate referral. Neck surgery or trauma may also injure this preganglionic part of the pathway. The postganglionic pathway passes from the superior cervical ganglion onto the carotid plexus. It descends with the internal carotid artery to the cavernous sinus. Here, the fibres join the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve passing through the superior orbital fissure into the orbital apex and become the long ciliary nerve before entering the eye. Sweating is not usually affected by postganglionic Horner's lesions due to division of the nerve supply at the carotid bifurcation. A Horner's syndrome associated with unexplained neck or facial pain should be considered as a carotid dissection and promptly investigated, usually by MR angiography. A Horner's syndrome associated with the gaze palsy 
should lead to investigation of the cavernous venous sinus, usually with MRI. Cluster headache often features transient Horner syndrome during the attack. Men are affected six times more than women. Features of cluster headache are severe headache around the eye or temple associated with lacrimation and redness, blocked or watering nose and sweating all on one side. The attacks last for 30 minutes to two hours, are often one to two times per day and after four to eight weeks they stop, on average for around a year. They're both debilitating and treatable with verapamil and steroids effective for prophylaxis. To criticise, comment or share your knowledge with others, please go to iVideos.blogspot.com where you will find transcripts, links and more videos. <laughs>